Hi there, this is Philip from Beyond the Tabletop. In this video we look at adding some extra details to the kit, making radio antennae and spent ammo casings, along with adding in the Gorgon infantry. With the build complete I wanted to add a few extra details to the kit just to make it really stand out and take it to that next level. As you can see just here I've added in three aerials to the back. That's the comms area and quite a lot on Forge Wild kits. These little nodules represent where aerials are meant to go, although they don't ever tell you that on their instructions. But from looking online and looking at lots of images, that's clearly where they're meant to go. If I show you from the other side, you can see them up close in a little bit more detail. The three wires are made from guitar wire. On the one on the far left and the far right, I had completely removed the coil that goes around. However, the one on the middle, what I've done is I've left a tiny bit of coil just at the very bottom, just to give that one a bit of extra detail and to make the three aerials stand out a little bit from each other. For the guitar wire, I use slightly different thicknesses of each just to vary it up as well. Quite often in modeling aerials, I notice you get a small little ball at the end. That could be for realism, but it's also to stop yourself from stabbing them because these guitar wires are quite sharp. The guitar wire is stiff but also quite flexible so hopefully they won't snap off very easily and they'll be quite rigid. In the past I've used things like bristles from cleaning brushes. They're really good but they're also very soft and quite prone to warping over time. Obviously if you did an excess force on these you'd probably permanently bend them or break them off so you still need to be quite careful with them. Also the downside with these is you could quite easily stab yourself as these are very sharp. What you could do is dip this end in some paint or super glue and that will give you a nice little rounded beaded end which would protect you from stabbing yourself. However, I don't particularly like the look of that so I'm going to keep them bare as is and I'll just have to be extra careful. The other thing that I've done is add some spent ammo casings to the back just so it looks like these guns have been firing. To do that I've cut some 1mm plastic rod and then I've ever so slightly drilled out one end just so it looks like the casings are spent as you can see here. I will plan to do a video on that in a bit more detail as there's a few extra things that I did for it. I also made sure there was an equal amount of casings on either side because it's a twin linked stubber so they'd be firing the same number of rounds. I affixed them to the gorgon with some super glue and just made sure they had a slightly random scattered look. So you can see here and on here. The last thing I wanted to cover is the Gorgon Infantry Troops. Now this is a set that came separately from the Gorgon and again like the Gorgon it's out of production. Unfortunately I don't think this will ever come back because lots of people started using these and splitting them out into individual units. This is a complete set that I bought second hand. To make these work for my Gorgon I do need to give them a bit of a love. A couple of parts are broken and of course they've been painted so I also need to strip off the paint. Starting at the back you get four lots of two infantry, you get two lots of three infantry and you get six lots of six infantry. These two unfortunately have broken up so they're actually in groups of three but they will need gluing back together to maintain the strips. For the larger strips you have three different designs and then you have a mirror pair matching up to the other side. As you can see they've been partially painted so I'll have to try and strip off the paint so I can repaint them myself. That's the first set, then there's the second set and then lastly you've got the third set which is broken in two so I'll have to glue that back together again. The ones on the left I've already attempted to strip the paint off. I'll probably give them another go soaking them in isopropyl alcohol to try and strip that paint off. All of those infantry models can line up inside the Gorgon to completely fill it. Now there's a few different ways I was thinking about affixing them. Once they're painted I could actually glue them all in. However similar to the guns it'd be quite nice if I could take them out just to dust them off or fix any paint work on them from time to time. What I've decided to do is pin the first rank in place which I've done by drilling some holes here and then that first row that's secure will hold the rest of the troops in place. Now I'm really lucky to get hold of a couple of models from the set, completely new and unpainted. Unfortunately I don't have a complete set in this fashion which is why I'll be using the second hand models for the most part. However as these are in the best condition I thought it'd be best to have them at the front because they're the models you'll see the most. 
And what I've done is I've just drilled out the bottom of the feet and added in a short pin to each piece. The pins themselves are about a millimeter in diameter. So I've glued the pins down to the feet first and then I used a marker pen just to paint the very ends of those rods. And then when I press that down onto the floor, that left two marker pen marks on the floor, which allowed me to work out where to drill the holes. So I knew they would fit perfectly. You can just see how these pins line up to the holes. And then they just slot in place and that secures them down. And then I can rattle that around and they won't move around. Then if I just open up through the front, you can see them inside. What I can do now is just fill up the gorgon just to show you how it all looks. To start off with, you need to use your two sets of two, which just go in either side of your driver cabin. Then you need one of your long sets, which will go in just behind these two brackets. And then when you come across the wall braces, you need to use a set of three and a set of two. And then you can go back to using your long sets. And then instead of using my last set here, I'm going to use this set instead. And there we have it with them all in place and that front rank is now pinned in place. So if I try and wobble them around, you can see there's a bit of movement. Some of that movement is caused by the fact that there is two lots that have been broken in half. So once those are glued together, they should be a lot more solid. So this means I can remove all the troops whenever I want, but I can still play the game without having any of the models fall over. With the Gorgon troops in, I can then do a test fit of the whole build just to see how the finished Gorgon should look. So there is the finished Gorgon. Now with the extra detail and the Gorgon troops in, if I just spin it around so you can have a look all the way around. There's an awful lot of detail packed into the kit, as well as some additional detail that I've added in. I hope you've enjoyed this build series, trying to get the Gorgon just to this stage. I'm now going to carry on with the video series and show you how I paint up the Gorgon, and I'll cover that in the next video. As always, I hope you've enjoyed that video. Feel free to drop me a comment below, and if you want to stay notified about the next video, make sure you're subscribed. Until the next time, take care.